So I call to order the regular meeting of the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee today, September the 24th at 6 p.m. Um, will the members here rise to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Are we going to do it once or are we doing it for both meetings? Let's just keep it at one time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Five out of eight is what we need, so we're good. <laughs> Okay, so after having looked at the minutes for the last meeting of this committee, uh, dated April 23rd, 2024, does any member of the committee have any corrections to make? Having heard none, I ask for a motion to accept the minutes as they've been presented. Thank you. Um, the chair recognizes the first and second motion and will call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, uh, we've accepted the minutes as presented. Okay, so the new business is the presentation and discussion and possible recommendations to consider the increasing water impact fees and the presenters Melinda Mortz. Good evening. And, Good evening. Uh, thank you all very much. So we met in last April and y'all did make a recommendation to increase the impact fees based on what we knew about the sales of water rights at the time. Since that time, we actually went out and started looking for uh, purchase of water rights, and we found that they are now twice the cost of what they used to be. We purchased water rights in 2022 for 5,700 per acre foot. In 2023, the only water rights that were offered for sale were for 10,000 per acre foot. We did not take that sale because it was only one sale, and that typically does not make a market. Um, but this year, going out and looking for water rights, we have so far found one for 10600 one for 11000 and one for 12000 per acre foot. So one of the city council members has asked that we come back and consider increasing our impact fees so that at least it covers a portion of the cost of what it costs us to buy them. Can I ask who that council member was? Mr. Campos. Okay. I'm just, yeah, curious to know where all of a sudden the whole water issue came from. So. The water issue came from me. Okay. Yeah. Went, like I said, but, when we went out to go purchase them, the sale that I found off of the Edwards Aquifer Authority was for 12000 uh, per acre foot. And when it was brought to the council's attention, Mr. Campos gave me a suggestion to go out and contact a couple of people that he knew from SAWS, where he works. And so that's how I was able to find the, the lower two. Myself, we look for water rights every year. Like I said, the only ones I found in 2023 were for 10,000, but it was only one sale. And so I didn't, I was like, we'll just wait, wait a year, see what happens. So we rolled the money over. And then this year when I started looking again, we also had, uh, the other problem is we belong to a, um, a group called the Regional Water Resource Development Group. We've been members of them since 1998. And they get together as a collective every October or November. And that group sets what they want to pay for the, for the price of water rights. And they got together so that they could combat what, San Antonio water system was doing and other big water users so that they could keep the prices within check. And so we've been, San Antonio River Authority was the agent for water rights through that group. So we've been buying water rights every single year through that group and through San, the Sarah. They let us know this year they're no longer gonna be an, the agent for the group. And so this group has to go out and find another agent 
and get that back on board so that we can again collectively set what we're willing to pay for water rights. But I talked to several other companies and one of them told me, I said, you know, here's what I found, 12,000 an acre foot. And she goes, well, it's a little high, it's in the ballpark, but I would be willing to bet you that next year they're gonna be about 15,000 an acre foot. So the market's not coming down, they're not making more water. We're getting more and more developed here in San Antonio area. So I think we just have to be prepared for that. And as you know, um, impact fees, when you, when you put those on a developer, they don't pay for the entire cost of that acre foot. They, can, they are only required to pay for half. So that's what you'll see in this presentation. So we recently updated them and adopted them. And here's what you see. Most people have 5 eighths to 3 quarter inch meters. So their water supply impact fee was 26.50, and then the development fee was 96.12. And then it goes up the, the larger the meter that you have. So here's our growth projections. We're estimating that we're going to have a population between 13,000 and 15,000 once all of our available undeveloped land is developed. So that's a growth of about 390 meters in 10 years. I think that's going to be higher now. We just had a couple of development cases in, so I think it's going to be closer to 568 meters. And so there was our growth pr projection, which was 1.29% annually. Now we have those three new developments in, but that takes up most of our available vacant land. So it'll be an increase all of, at once dramatically, but then it's going to level back out again because we just don't have any other room for development. So we currently own 1758 acre feet of Edwards water rights. We rarely get to use them all because we're always under some kind of a restriction, a, a critical drought stage. I checked today, we are under, as of today, we can only use 1307 of our water rights. And I'll skip over here. So the only thing that we need to buy for the city with, and that we can buy with impact fees is water rights and any improvements to the system that are due to new development. You can't fix your old mains, you can't fix your old uh, pumps and wells, all those things, unless you're going to increase the size due to the new development. And so on our capital improvements project, we're calculating uh, 3897 the impact fee would be 9993. The max we could charge is 4997. And so here's SAW's impact fee. Now they have a flow. We don't need that one. Here's their water supply fee. Here's what we had adopted. This is what we're proposing that we increase it to. This is SAW's impact fee for system development. Here's the one we have. And this is the one we're gonna we're gonna keep it at that one. So the total impact fee to our developers would be 59.59. SAWS is 47.49. So we're, we need to reevaluate them every five years. Um, this time we're reevaluating them sooner because of the price of the water rights. And does anybody have any questions? I did prepare a little cheat sheet for you so that you can see. I have a question. Um, the, on the slide that you showed us like two slides ago, uh, they talked about the developer's fee. Is that, the, is that what we're considering tonight or are we considering what citizens are going to pay? Or both? <laughs> the citizens don't pay for this. Okay. This is strictly on the developer. Okay. Will it impact their monthly water bill? No. Okay. This is a one-time fee when we set the meter. Okay. And, and so the developer will pay 50%? They will pay that fee, yes. Okay. 50%, well, it's a, it's a little lower than 50%, but, and it won't be 50% next year if the price of water rights goes up to 15,000. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and see where it's going. Will it change as the price goes up or down? Or just That'll up? depend on the recommendation from this group and from the city council. You also don't want to run the risk, or you may want to run the risk, of making it too expensive for them to develop. Melinda, I have a question. 
with that last statement you just made, can you please, and, and I don't understand, explain the difference between the SAWS, the, the delta, the, the delta between the SAWS impact fee and the proposed Leon Valley impact fee? It's $1,200? Mm -hmm. I don't know on what calculation they base theirs on. We are basing ours on a total projected population build out. So it would depend on how they did it. Did they go around and look at actual land use assumptions for every area of their city? Did they base it on that they have enough water? Right now they have the pipeline and they have also have Edwards Well and they have an aquifer storage and recovery bank. And so they may not be so dependent upon getting water rights as we are. Okay. Thank you. You had said something about um, if something needed to be repaired, it couldn't be repaired unless there was going to be an increase in capacity. This this fund, these monies cannot be used for ordinary repairs of your existing system. Okay. They can only be used for improvements that are due to the new development. Okay. Ms. Melinda, are we supposed to open up the <coughs> floor for dis input from the from the citizens? You certainly may. All right. Are you all ready for that? Okay. Well, if there is any input from the citizens, we'd like you to come up and ask your questions okay. or make your comments. And it is 614. Am I a member of this group? As an alternate to the Zoning Commission? Yes, you are. Then why am I not able to sit on the dais? Have you registered as a volunteer for the group? Yes, ma'am. Oh, he's well then please, manager. come sit down. Yeah, you're an, you're an alternate, and since we have open spots, when we started the actual planning and zoning portion, I was going to have you but, come but up. I'm since at, we am I a member of this group? Yes. I, yeah, I, I guess. This is what it, this is the planning and zoning. This is like a subcommittee of planning and zoning, right? It's or own what? committee, but y'all were appointed as the Capital Improvements right. Advisory Committee. Okay. So the Planning and Zoning Commission is the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee. And yes, you are a member as an alternate. So may I come to the dais and sit down with the rest of you? Yes, sir. Yeah, you yeah. It looks like we're missing if. Right, so you We're have to We're going to recognize make, absences at this correct. point. Correct. Yeah. So you have to, so uh, you're the chair of the, so what happens is at the very beginning of your meeting, you have to, on the record, name whether or not Ms. Gomez is excused, like if she contacted somebody, whether she's excused or unexcused, um, it, you know, but absentee, and then you call your alternate to sit on the dais. Alternates only sit on the dais when there's a vacancy. A, or a quorum, sorry, or lack of, or you're missing a member. But other than that, the alternates sit, stay in the audience. All right. Uh, the chairs make the decision on the alternates, and because it makes it very confusing on the vote. And so you cannot place a vote, you can discuss items. And so it's always been the practice, like when Evan Bowl was on the committee and he was an alternate, Cassie would have him come to the podium to make whatever statements he needed to make. He would not sit on the dais unless we were short a person, because if you so happen to vote on an item by accident, it could make the vote null and void because you're well, an alternate. Not, excuse me, I'll not interrupt the meeting, but that is not the way it has been handled it, for years. It, okay. It's the pro I mean, it is a process, and that's the way I, we've been handling it for quite some time. I just wanted to say, um, from what I understand from the public, it, this meeting's not streaming currently. Are we supposed to be streaming? It, it should be. Uh, oh, it's not zoning commission meeting. It's your capital commission. Okay. There might be members of the public that are interested in, in this meeting, so we might want to start that. We don't, we don't uh, stream all of our committee meetings. We only stream planning and zoning and council meetings. But I thought this was part of the planning and zoning. It, it's, it's still a separate thing. Well, I, I would recommend you guys stream this. I don't think there's any reason not, not to be streaming this now. What constitutes the quorum? Five out of eight. 
excuse me? Five out of eight or four Five. out of okay. Nine. All right. Forgive me for not inviting you. Well, I'm confused on how this is operating. I'll be honest with you. If you're not using the mic, please turn it off. I'm confused. I, I didn't get any minutes. I didn't get any agenda. I didn't get anything for this meeting. Yeah, I think, I think, well, I would say this. I mean, we're kind of in a transition right now. We don't have a planning and zoning director. So we have other staff members that are filling in. So I would say let's, let's be patient at this point. I know staff have a lot on their hands and until that vacancy is filled, I think let's, let's try to be somewhat compassionate about that. I, I, I see your concern. Um, I, I, I also wonder, I mean, I have some questions. We'll, we'll ask it later of, about how this came about. But um, I would say when it comes to this dais issue, we can talk about it. But um, I think at this point, I would say let's go with the recommendation of, of, of the city manager, just for the sakes of until we get out of this chapter here of staffing shortages and filling positions, I think it'd be best that we just we just kind of keep status quo right now as far as this issue. It seems like we're having a lot of absences, so most likely you'll move up to a permanent seat. So that, that's what I would imagine at this well, point. Well, and our apologies, too, if you didn't get the email. So we will make sure that you're on that email list to get any further capital improvements. Excuse me, Capital Improvements Advisory Committee meetings. We shouldn't have another one until we want to revisit it next year, but our apologies if you didn't get that email. I got an email indicating that this meeting would be held at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. from the director. That's it? That's it. That's it. Um, so y'all are streaming. Y'all started to begin streaming at 6. So, okay, so good. So y'all are streaming. So I don't know who said that y'all weren't streaming. So. It, it was Josh, actually. Yeah, yeah. so it's like a stream. Um, I don't know if he's... Well, like he's, he's pretty sharp when it comes to tech yeah. stuff, so, I mean, we can laugh no, about think, it, but that's... I think what it is is he's on YouTube. He's not on our streaming service, so he has to go to the website and look at the streaming service. Our IT person probably didn't hook up YouTube to this meeting. Okay. He probably hooked up the YouTube channel to your zoning commission meeting, which okay. we will download the meeting on YouTube when he yeah. comes in tomorrow. Okay. So that does happen. If you ever look online and you're looking, just so you all know, if you look online and you're looking whether or not we're streaming... Uh, you need to go on our website. Our website's our official streaming service. Now, we stream because people like YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and we stream at various locations. And so depending on where he's looking, it may not be streaming on YouTube. But if you go to our website, it's streaming there. And when you say website, does that include the app as well, the the, the Leon Valley? No, so your Leon Valley app, I, I don't, I don't no, think it's... It doesn't, no. That's your like report code yes. issues. That's yeah. not... No, that's my not, Leon Valley. Yeah, my Leon Valley is your report it's code an, issues. That, that's not... A lot of people use that to stream as well because there is a streaming app. Oh, okay, then maybe. Yeah. Then, yeah, then it's, it's that app. Then it's, if it's hooked up to our website, then that's the stream. Okay, okay. I appreciate the, I guess there's a lot of things up in the air, and so yeah, it's good to clarify these things, right? Yeah, so. Anyways, but if it okay. was our fault, then I do apologize. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so we'll continue the, the public input portion of the meeting Just, are there any citizens that want to come up and talk about the um the impact fee for the water okay all right not having would you like to say anything sir let's close the public hearing at, at 6 20. where do we get these figures from our consultant our water consultant yes sir thank you is it still Ardura? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. is it, did, are these figures calculated probably according to the Texas law for, yes, yes, for uh, calculating the impact fees? Okay. And it's a one-time fee? Yes, ma'am. Here's the, the law right here. Right, having closed the public input and looking at the committee members, yeah, do you I'm want gonna, to say I'm anything? I'm going to ask another question. Okay, um, I recognize you to ask. Thank you. Um, when was the last time Leon Valley purchased water rights? In 2022. And 
with, with the figures for the last time we purchased uh, in there, in, in those figures that you just showed a couple of minutes ago for the last time we purchased water? You had the old impact fees at the last time we purchased water in 2022. The impact fees had not been updated. Okay. Any idea? And what, what were we paying per, per acre? Oh, yeah. We were paying thing? about 5700 per acre foot. Wow. Crazy. Any, from your perspective, what, what's the explanation? Is it the typical things? That, I mean, inflation? Is it just continued drought? So. What do you, what, do you, what, what I counts think number for one this? is drought because we were in severe drought in 22 and 23. Uh -huh. And during that time, um, I'm sure there were people out there, developers and everybody else that were looking to get water rights. Um, and most of the time what they could get was le were leases instead of actual purchase of water rights. But also you've got so much development here that there's a real competition to get water rights. Um, I spoke to several people on the list of sellers from the Edwards Aquifer Authority's list. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady on there who said, I will never sell my water rights. I'll lease, but I'm only going to lease for a year. And before we were able to get one year, three year and five year leases, no problem. Ten year leases if you wanted to. Now they're kind of holding back and they're saying, mm, not only am I not going to lease, this was two of them on the list, but I'm also not going to lease till the end of the year. So they were picking up leases between September and December. So. Because they wanted to maximize just... Two reasons. If they're in the aquifer uh, storage and recovery bank that is with Edwards Aquifer Authority, if you're in a drought year and the, the well drops, J17 well drops, or if the aquifer goes down below 500,000 feet, you'll have what's called a forbearance. So you can no longer lease those rights. So you hang on to them. I mean, that's what it, you know, they do. Um, if you're if you have base water rights, you can only lease those, or I don't even think you can sell them. I think you can just lease them to another irrigator. You can't sell to a developer or lease to a developer. Mm -hmm. um, unrestricted, you can. But like I said, the the two or three people that I talked to, they were they were really concerned about keeping their water rights. And it's all in that memo that I gave y'all. I kind of tried to explain where we used to get our water rights from, where we went to get them this time, how much the leases were, how much we, we finally did get. We finally did get one that was 10, 10 six, but mm -hmm. that person has them leased out to the San Antonio water system for the next two years. And so we wouldn't be able to use them. We would own them, but we have to honor that lease to them. And he didn't want to sell them until he sold his house. So he was not interested in selling this year. He was looking at selling his house next year. Mm. So I didn't want to take the chance because I don't know if he's going, I don't have earnest money down or anything like that. What if he raises his next year? So we're currently pursuing 100 acre foot at 11,000 per acre foot. Haven't got it yet. So, oh, Melinda, what is this committee to do tonight? Are we, since we had already decided we were going to buy it, the price went up, what are, are, what are we going to vote on tonight? You're going to make a recommendation, uh, in either approval or denial, or, or tell me to go do something else. And then after that, I have to put this item on our website and in the newspaper for a period of 30 days and invite public comment. And then once the 30 days are up, we take it to the city council and hold a public hearing and they can either approve them, deny them, or choose a different way to go. Is there anything else that you want us to listen to? Any other input? No, ma'am. That's it. Okay. Yes, we have a comment. Uh, Belinda, thank you. This was extremely helpful. Good. Yeah. Good. Just want you to say that. Thank you. Does the committee need extra time to speak or to uh, ask any questions? Okay. Are you ready to make a motion to recommend that that the uh, yep. that it go forward to the city yes. the city council and to the public consideration? I move that we accept the proposal for the purchase of water rights as they've been presented. Is there a second? 
I second. Having um, the motion made and a second, all right. I would like to take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Any abstentions? All right, so we have a vote of uh, yes. I'm you can just say the I'm motion the passed. Thing. Okay, yeah. okay. The motion is passed. All right. Um, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. And now I'm going to close the meeting of the uh, Capital Improvement Advisory Committee. And thank you much for coming, for talking about this. Uh, meeting closes at 625. 625. We're going to wait five minutes for the 630 meeting to start, and we're going to rearrange the Maya on here for the PNV meeting. Sit here.